So in this segment, segment three, I'm gonna talk about two files that contain important Medicare Advantage data that can be linked to the uh, encounter records themselves. Um, these two files contain beneficiary and plan information that are probably um, you know, very important to many research um, projects. Um, following the segment, segment four, I'll dive into the encounter files um, and um, into the encounter files uh, that contain the encounter records and that uh, contain beneficiary, and, um, I'm sorry, yes. So, so in segment four, I'll dive into the encounter files that contain the health utilization records, sorry. Okay. So the, um, again, the two files I'll, I'll be discussing now are the MBSF and the plan characteristic files. The um, Master Beneficiary Summary File, or MBSF, contains enrollment information and demographic variables, and the Plan Characteristics File uh, contains um, Medicare Advantage plan information. So we'll start with the MBSF. Um, so who is included in this, in this important file? Um, it's an annual file that in that has one, um, includes all beneficiaries of Medicare. So that includes fee-for-service and Medicare Advantage enrollees. Um, and it comes, uh, let's see here. So, uh, so the file is not limited to users newly enrolled in the calendar year. It includes everyone enrolled in the calendar year. Um, there is no specific indicator for, for new beneficiaries, however, um, but you can use, uh, um, uh, there's a variable called coverage start date that, that could be helpful for identifying new enrollees. Uh, again, the file is annual, so there's one MBSF file per year released. Um, eligibility is determined by the Social Security Administration and the Railroad, um, Railroad Retirement Board. Um, and so, yeah, so the eligibility information in, in the MBSF is based on those two sources, which makes it, you know, very, very reliable information. Um, and again, all benefit groups are included in the file. So fee-for-service and Medicare Advantage enrollees. So uh, I created this pie chart using the 2021 MBSF. Uh, here you can see the breakout uh, split between the two populations, fee-for-service and Medicare Advantage populations. Uh, they're almost, it's almost split in half. Um, you can see that there's a 47% um, of members in 2021 were enrolled in Medicare Advantage. And um, I know that is, even since 2021, it, it has grown to over 50%. So, you know, as, as this uh, population has, has grown, uh, you can see that how, how it becomes more important to understand encounter data um, so researchers can, can, can do good work and, and um, you know, do more research on, on Medicare Advantage. So um, the structure of the MBSF, uh, I'll just talk about that a little bit now. Um, so again, it includes everyone, all enrollees. Uh, there are actually four segments in the MBSF. There is the uh, base segment, which is um, you know the one that uh, will be used the most by most researchers and is pretty critical to any, any um, research research project because it in includes, you know, demographics and enrollment information. Um, but there are other segments to the MBSF, including um, the chronic condition segment, other chronic conditions, cost and use, and the national De death index files. Um, but note that the ones with asterisks only contain um, information on fee-for-service members. Um, so the, the two that contain Medicare Advantage information are the base and the NDI segments. 
Um, right. And so you know, for all these files, there is exactly one record per beneficiary. So um, the MBS F base segment, again, contains uh, uh, demographic information. Um, and because it's sourced from the Social Security Administration, um, it is very reliable. Um, here's a list of the demographic variables in the file. Um, place of residence comes in the form of state, county, and zip code. Um, and just like would like, like to mention that there are some of uh, some of the encounter record riffs do contain um, they might contain like date of birth or gender, but we do recommend um, relying on the MBSF for that for for demographic information um, over what you'll see in the encounter counter files because it is um, probably going to be you know more reliable inconsistent. Okay, so, um, so the MBSF is the go-to file for um, identifying enrollment. Um, and so there are uh, a, a array of, of enrollment variables and um, you know, so you can identify those who have part A, part B, and HMO. Um, and um, so for each of these parts, there will be, um, you know, a, an array of 12 variables for each of these parts. Um, so one variable for, for each month of the year. And there will also be a summary variable that is a tally of the total number of months uh, of coverage in that part. So, um, so you know, by combining these variables and counting them um, with your, your statistical packages, and um, um, you know, you can get at the enrollment um, uh, for for your cohort. You can identify your cohort the way the way that you like. Um, so, for example. Um, oh, and I, I just want to talk about uh, part A and part B month variables. Um, they actually have different names, but are uh, maybe not intuitive. The, the part A variables are uh, um, for each month are called the Benny HI coverage total months, and the part B variables are called Benny SMI coverage total months. Um, and HMO months is HMO in, or yeah, HMO months, um, something like that. Um, but uh, so uh, the the A and B months will have um, indicators for fee for service and for for Medicare Advantage members. Um, so the only way to distinguish HMO members is to use the HMO indicator. Um, and so, for example, I created many of the slides that you'll see in the presentation today. Um, I identified, you know, Medicare Advantage enrollees um, who were, were continuously enrolled in Medicare Advantage in 2021, um, who, who did not switch, switch from fee-for-service to MA at any point in the year um, by setting the number of Part A months equal to the number of Part B months equal to the number of HMO months. So using those kind of summary variables, that's how I identified the cohort for, for some of these slides. Um, there's also Part D coverage information available in the MBSF. Um, the Medicare Advantage population has a very high rate of Part D enrollment, almost, uh, you know, over 97% in 2021. Um, some M MA plans include all three parts, parts A, B, and D. However, some plans only cover A and B. But uh, yeah, there are, there are many plans that include all three. Um, so this these charts here just kind of show you that there is 
there's pretty significant difference between the fee for service and Medicare Advantage population when it comes to Part D enrollment, with MA having a um, you know very very high rate of Part D enrollment. Um, the MBSF also contains an array of variables that uh, indicate whether a member was dually el eligible for Medicare and Medicaid. Um, so uh, you, here's a comparison of the, uh, the MA to the fee-for-service population rate of dual eligibles, and uh, the Medi Medicare Advantage population has a, has a slightly higher percentage of dual eligibles in their population. So, so again, um, going back to, uh, you know, these, these variables in the MBSF that indicate whether or not a person was, was enrolled in, in Medicare Advantage in a given month, there are, you know, you're gonna see 12 of these variables, one for each month, it's, they're called HMO end with the month uh, number on the, on the end. Um, and then aside from the, the monthly indicators, there's also a summary variable that contains the uh, total number of months a member was enrolled in Medicare Advantage. Um, just one note, the summary count variable does not distinguish across HMO types. So if they did switch um, from one Medicare Advantage plan to another um, in the year, although it's it's rare, like Steph already talked about, um, you know, the the total months will just be the total months enrolled in any Medicare Advantage plan. Here's a table that uh, gives a count of uh, of uh, one of the monthly um, HMO indicators. I think this one is from from July. Um, yes, July, July of 20, uh, 2007, 2013, and 2021. Um, so here you can see that the indicator is not just a yes and no uh, um, variable. It does have uh, various values. Um, however, there are two very dominant values. Uh, they are zero and C, and zero indicates that they were not enrolled in managed care in that that month, while C indicates that they that they were. Um, and you can see that the the vast vast majority of enrollees are going to fall into one of these two buckets. So, um, in 2021, 20, 27 million people in July of 2021 were were. Uh, indicated as having Part C and 39 million um, were, were uh, marked as not enrolled in managed care. So either they had fee for service or they were not enrolled in Medicare at all that month. Um, uh, so there are some other, you know, less, uh, uh, lesser used values. And you can see that many of them have uh, um, kind of been, been phased out over time. So, you know, in, by 2021, um, you know, most of these are, are down to zero, zero members, but um, they, there is still one, the value of one non-lock-in, lock-in CMS to pro process provider claim still has about 250,000 members. Um, so just be aware that uh, this category for this category, some of those, um, utilization records might actually be in the fee-for-service files because CMS processes some or part of those members' um, services, their, their records. So, um, you know, the uh, it could be um, worth considering, uh, you know, whether or not you want to include uh, those with a one as being, you know, managed care or not. Um, is something that uh, you might want to um, consider excluding, you know, the ones or um, just at least learning more about them before you decide. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so with the version K of the MBSF came um, the monthly information on um, 
contract number and plan benefit package number uh, as well. So, so those variables, again, there are, there's one for each month. Um, there's a 12 for, for contract ID and 12 variables for the plan ID. Um, and those contain the, the actual contract and actual plan numbers um, for, the, for the enrollees. Um, I think prior to, um, I don't know what the year was, but they used to be encrypted, but um, I, I forget the year that the, that was changed, but then currently they are the actual, actual ID numbers. There's also uh, an array of 12 plan type codes that kind of uh, describe the type of managed care plan um, that the member has that, that month. So for example, some of the categories are HMO, um, HMO point of service, PPO, cost plan, et cetera. And I, I'll kind of show some of those categories coming up. Here we go right here, July of 2021, the Part C plan type indicator um, showed um, these breakouts by category. Um, so the, the plan type indicator actually has 24 total categories. Right here, we're just showing the top five. Um, and uh, you can see that the, the majority are described as um, health maintenance organizations, um, followed by local PPOs, um, also have a smaller percentage in regional PPOs, which are, um, you know, more like uh, covering an entire state or multiple states, um, and HMO point of service uh, type plans follow all of that. And um, there are also just a small fraction of enrollees um, distributed among other types of plans. But um, so, you know, these groupings, um, you might be interested in other types of sort of groups or descriptions for, for plans. There's there's another option in the plan characteristics file that I'll be talking about in a minute. So just be aware there's another, another option out there for you if you want to link the MBSF or enroll these to the um, plan characteristics file. Um, so let's see here. Yes, the... Um, plan identifiers, the Part C contract ID and Part C PBP ID contain the ID numbers for the MA plan that the member was enrolled in each month. 93% um, of MA members have uh, the same plan throughout the year is what um, I calculated um, in 2021. So very, very consistent for, for the you know, vast majority of members are going to be in the same plan um, continuously in a given year. But there are a certain you know, small percentage that do switch. Um, reasons for switching include moving to, to a different plan area um, or losing or gaining Medicaid coverage mid-year might be reasons for switching. Um, you can look up characteristics of the uh, plan using the contract and PPP ID variables in the MBSF um, and linking them to the plan characters characteristics file, which I'll talk about in a minute. But you need both of those fields to uniquely identify the exact plan a member was in. There is no inherent information built into plan numbers. Sometimes ID numbers can have some kind of a intrinsic information in them, but uh, they do not. Um, just a little bit on the national death index segment of the MBSF. Um, it, uh, in recent years, it was um, kind of enhanced to include more recent information. Um, so um, it is uh, another source it is a, a good source for, for death information for, for members who died in a given year. Um, it, it includes you know, death date and also the cause of death information. 
Um, the MBSF itself, the base segment contains uh, a death date. And when we compare that date to the NDI segment, uh, it agrees 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. So um, very consistent between the two segments. Um, here, if you're wondering if how the populations, the fee for service and Medicare Advantage, Advantage populations, um, you know, how similar they are, we kind of are going to show you an array of um, charts kind of comparing the two, like Steph said earlier, um, a lot of researchers are, are already familiar with the fee for service file files. And um, so it's just kind of a good, like, uh, comparison to make and also just to see how the populations, um, you know, see if they're drastically different or if they're, you know, really actually quite similar or how they differ, um, it can be of interest. So, um, you know, if for a fee-for-service population, a slightly higher percentage died in, in 2021 compared to um, Medicare Advantage. Um, here's a, a listing of the cause of death uh, according to the to the NDI comparing um, MA to fee for service and the, the lists are almost identical. So that's kind of interesting. 2021, the leading cause of death rate being COVID-19 followed by um, heart disease, et cetera. Okay, so moving on to the plan characteristics files. So, um, so again, this is kind of like a suite of file. We say file, but there's actually like um, several different segments within the plan characteristics file, <laughs> um, and it so it contains uh, information about each each individual Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and Part D plans as well. So it's created uh, based on information submitted by the plan to CMS every year. And it's created using a, an end of year snapshot. So it may not exactly match, uh, for example, the CMS landscape or other public use files, which uh, um, may have been snapshotted at, at a different point in time than the plan characteristics file was because um, characteristics of a plan can change um, each year. So just be aware of that. Um, and uh, another note, CMS uses the information that plan sends, uh, sends to CMS to um, review benefits for, for, for compliance to make sure that um, it's at least as good as original Medicare. And um, I'm sure there are other, other things they're, they're checking. So again, the structure of, of the plan characteristics suite of files, there's actually um, um, six subfiles um, listed there. Um, you know, they, they contain um, uh, you know, information on plan type, benefit design, premiums, um, cost sharing, um, service area information for Part C and D plans. So um, the plan benefit base file, uh, I think that will be like um, where you'll find sort of like the plan design, um, premium file, premiums, service area, That'll be you know a list of counties that the plan uh, covers uh, is is serving. Um, cost sharing tier file that one is particular to to Part D plans and relates to drug tiers. Special needs file um, that one is uh, just kind of sort of specific has specific detail information on. Um, um, chronic conditions, special needs plans, and institutional SNPs. Um, it kind of indicates the chronic conditions that the, um, that the SNP covers. Um, it has a, a 
sort of descriptive variable for institutional SNPs. Um, and then finally, the plan crosswalk file. Um, so plans um, can sometimes their ID number will, will change from year to year, but, but the plan really is still the same plan. And so in that case, if you wanted to consistently track the same plan over years, you um, can use the plan crosswalk file to make sure you're, you're tracking that same plan, even if the, the ID number has changed. Um, there's a link to the CCW data dictionary for the plan characteristics file. So you can peruse through, through that to see what kind of variables it contains. Um, I know it contains, you know, some other um, valuable variables that it contains include like a, a SNP indicator variable um, and also an, an egg whip indicator variable if you are interested in um, employer group plans. Um, and note that the unit of record can differ by subfile. So uh, you want to make sure you're understanding what the unit of record is for each subfile, which um, you can you can find in the in the user guide. Um, so, like for example, the service area file, there's going to be um, multiple rows per per plan, and each one I think has you know the the county uh, a different county for you know explaining which which county the plan covers. So there's going to be multiple rows for if there's if it's covering multiple counties, um, and so you just want to be aware of the of the unit of record so that you're not, um, you know, when you're doing a join, you're not um, creating duplicate records or yeah, when you're expecting something different. Okay. So again, the base, the base file um, contains plan type and drug benefit information. There's one contract at uh, one record per contract or plan. Um, and um, so there's gonna be a contract ID number um, that's unique to each contract with CMS um, and then a plan benefit package number. And that indicates the specific benefit package within a contract. You need to use both of these ID numbers to identify a unique plan. Um, one note on the contract ID, the first letter of the, of the ID actually has some intrinsic information um, in it. So for example, if it starts with an H that indicates that the contract is, a, um, is an HMO, um, local, local managed care plan, um, R indicates it's a regional plan. Um, E stands for uh, employer direct plan, and that's when uh, an employer contracts directly with CMS. Um, and there are very few of those. Um, most employers who want to provide benefits to their retirees in the, in the form of an egg whip actually go through an insurance company and um, contract that way. Um, so, so they're not gonna those those contracts aren't gonna start with it, the letter E because they're not directly contract, contracting with CMS, but they will um, have uh, the the first letter, and then I think it will be followed by eight zero zero is as a way to to identify um, egg whip egg whip plans. Um, so yes, okay. Um, so just to kind of give you a, a high level account of, of uh, the number of plans that we see in the 2021 plan characteristics file, we counted uh, about 6,300 total unique plan offerings in 2021. Um, beneficiaries are enrolled in, in plans across all 50 states. Most of these plans offer Part C and D coverage. Um, and we found that when we tried uh, linking MA beneficiaries from the MBSF to the plan characteristics file using the, the contract 
IDs and uh, plan IDs um, from the MBSF that over 99% linked successfully. So um, works pretty well, the linkage. As I said earlier, um, the sort of um, plan type variable in the MBSF is maybe one way you want to you know, rely on that variable to category, categorize plans, but there's, there's also a organization type variable in the plan characteristics file that you might want to look into. Um, but the, you know, the vast majority are categorized as local coordinated care plans. Um, you know, maybe this is a way to sort of eliminate the, the more obscure plan types um, from your, from your um, research analysis, I don't know, but it's just something to be aware of that this is another option for you to use. Um, 